couple of weeks ago, we broke the news right here on Taking Stock that Devon House ice cream would be hitting store shelves soon. And that got you and the whole internet buzzing with excitement. Tonight, we're thrilled to provide you with further insights on this story from a director of Devon House Ice Cream, Dr. Matthew Clark. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Toledo. How are you? I am good. How are you? Excellent. Um, I, I'm going to say I'm a big fan of the show and I'm a great admirer of what you're doing in this new digital media space. So I appreciate the invitation and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much. All right. So tell us about your involvement with Devon House Ice Cream. You're, you're a director, but how did yes. you get involved with the company? Well, I mean, Scoops Unlimited is a family company. Um, ah. It was originated 35 years ago by my mom, uh, Carol Clark Webster. So she's the matriarch of the company. And both myself and my brother have been involved at certain points. And at the current, uh, at the current time, uh, I'm activate, uh, sorry, I'm actively participating as a director. So is this the only product that Scoops Unlimited creates? Yes. Uh, Scoops Unlimited exclusively makes uh, Devon House ice cream, and that's basically uh, the entirety of, of what we produce at this point. Oh, see, I didn't know. I'm too young. I've lived in Jamaica 16 years now, and so I always thought that Devon House ice cream was just at Devon House from time to time, from whenever right. they converted the facility into like a tourist attraction. So it's been there for about 35 years now. You, you guys have gained an amazing reputation. Uh, tell us what it's been like maintaining this family business for 35 years. Um, well, you know, it's a it's a labor of love. Um, it, it's something that has been a, a family business for this period of time. Um, you know, it, it's it's something that we we take a lot of pride in. Uh, you know, the I, I think people really comment on the quality of the ice cream, yeah. uh, and that's something that you know has. You know, if you if you'd have noticed uh, in the big early years of Devonos ice cream, it was at one single location, and you know, in the the early parts, you know, we weren't so concerned with expansion or rapid growth. It was really about you know perfecting the ice cream, getting the ice cream as high quality as as good as possible, and that's what was done in the initial uh, you know I would say ten years of the company in in, in one location. Uh, of course, we were at a you know an excellent location, you know, Devon House grounds. I think it's the best location to have ice cream in Jamaica for sure, maybe even the Caribbean. Um, and you know, since then we've, we've maintained our principles of the the company is to uh, have high quality ice cream with Caribbean specific flavors. Um, and I think we've managed to maintain that uh, you know for thirty five years up, up and coming to today. Yeah, absolutely. The first time I tasted it, I was like, okay, this is world-class ice cream. I appreciate that. Absolutely world-class product. And as a matter of fact, you even got a distinction. I think it was National Geographic naming Devon House like one of the top places in the world to have ice cream. And so yeah, we were ranked number four. Number four. And so after 10 years in the business, you guys decided that you're going to start branching out. Tell me about that expansion. Right. So I, in the last, I would say, it's really happened more in the last 10 to 15 years. Um, you know, we've sort of expanded our, our growth outside of just Devon House grounds. Uh, we initially started in uh, opening more Devon House branded stores. So we currently have seven uh, Devon House branded stores internationally, sorry, nationally, uh, that we own and operate. Um, and we're, we're planning to open another uh, very soon. So in, by midsummer, we should be at eight. Um, we have also expanded the number of authorized uh, resellers that we have throughout the country. So if you see in certain other places, maybe not a Devon House branded store, but you'll see a sticker that says Devon House ice cream sold here. Those are authorized resellers. Um, I think we've also expanded you know, in other locations. We sold to hotels. Uh, during the pandemic, you know, we started doing the mobile van. Um, and so you know, we're, we're constantly trying to expand the reach of Devon House ice cream throughout the country and, and I think we're doing a pretty good job of it. So where's the eighth location going to be? It's going to be in Spanish town. Uh, it's going to be in the new Brunswick uh, village. Uh, and so that should be opening hopefully around midsummer. Lovely. Wonderful. Now, something was said during that interview with William Mafu that we do need to clarify. So there is a relationship between Scoops Unlimited and Creamy Ice Cream. Let me ask you to just clarify what that relationship is. 
Sure. Uh, so, you know, Scoops and Creamy or Caribbean Cream Limited are our related companies. Um, I know you've interviewed my brother in the past uh, as regards to Creamy. And the story of Creamy is that you know, my brother uh, came back after school and was working at uh, Scoops for a while. And he, he noticed uh, an opportunity in the market for an economy uh, brand ice cream. And so he then left Scoops and opened up his own company, which was Caribbean Cream Limited and has built it to what it is today. Oh. Uh, including taking it public and, and everything else. Um, so, so that's you know, your the, brother. Yes. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry to cut you. Right. So, um, you know, that's the connection. Uh, you would notice that um, Scoops Unlimited is the largest shareholder uh, in Creamy. Uh, both myself and my mom are on Creamy's board. I'm current chairman. Um, so there's that connection, and then. We also have a, a shared services. I know you mentioned that in your uh, prior piece. Um, so we have a shared service division where we share certain um, uh, divisions of the business, specifically HR, marketing, finance, you know, because the, the business flows are, are the, the, the you know business flow is essentially the same. Um, so we you know we do that as a way to uh, lower expenses, as a, you know, a cost saving measure. Um, but outside of that, from the production standpoint, the production is entirely separate. So Scoops has their own factory and, you know, we manufacture uh, Devonos ice cream and Creamy has their own factory and the, or Kevin Cream has their own factory and they manufacture Creamy ice cream. So that's mm -hmm. where the separation is. So two completely different companies, but yes. basically the same family. So your family related, uh, but different businesses entirely. Yes. Just that you share some resources. Exactly. Economy. It's more of a shared resources, yes. Okay, understood. Thanks for clarifying that, Not Matthew. So this brings us to the current date. I've always thought that Devon House is a brand that should be in stores, that should be exported globally because of the quality. And now you guys have taken that step. Why has it taken so long? And, and what brings you here now? Well, you know, like I said, you know, I would say in the last 10 to 15 years, we have been rapidly expanding. So there are different avenues for expansion. Uh, our main focus uh, previously has been expanding the number of stores that we have. Um, but, you know, the, the pandemic was was a, you know, a, a, a learning tool. It was a, it was a sharp reminder that, you know, expanding the number of stores and expanding other places, we did pivot into, you know, mobile vans. But there are other avenues that, that Devon House was, was not available. You know, a, a common refrain that people would tell us is that, you know, whereas their, their preference is Devon House ice cream and they, they love to go to Devon House ice cream shops and Devon House ice cream stores, um, but in their freezers at home, they would have a different brand. And it would mainly be out of convenience. You know, you go to a supermarket and you take what's on the shelf, even if it's not your preferred brand, if it's not available. And so we wanted to change that. So uh, coming out of the pandemic, um, where we learned that obviously you know, we should have been in, in stores probably previously, but we were focused on other other modes of growth. Um, we began the, the planning to enter into uh, supermarkets or the modern trade. And so we really took the last two to three years to really refine that plan and, and perfect it. Um, and then things have finally come together. So we're, we're happy to announce that we're, we're going to be available in supermarket stores uh, as early as later this week. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're, we're excited about this, this new endeavor. You know, I can't wait to see it on supermarket shelves. You can stock up for your parties and that sort of thing. But I was surprised when we posted that video, Matthew, there were a couple of people, well, not a couple, several people who did not like the idea of Devon House going to retail. So there was one group who was saying that they, the whole, Devon House is a whole experience. Devon House ice cream is an experience that they think it will cheapen the brand to be in supermarkets because they want to stand in line for two hours to have that experience well, not, not hours, of Devon yeah. House ice cream. <laughs> well, on I guess on like Mother's Day, because we put that out around Mother's yes, Day when the true. line was very long. So they, they want to stand in line for a long time because it's part of the experience. What do you say to those people who say you're cheapening the brand by going retail? I mean, I, I don't think we're cheapening the brand. I think it's a little bit harsh for people who want to have the experience of going to a shoot, uh, sorry, a scoop uh, shop or a, a scoop retail store. 
that experience is still there. You know, and, and there are many reasons to still be in, in, in the scoop shops, you know, for people that want to have the experience of your cones, your waffle cones, your sundaes, to have toppings, milkshakes, you know, all of those things are things you can get exclusively in the scoop shops. And so those things are still available. Uh, and there is still, you know, the, there is still the, the event idea of going to a scoop store or a, a scoop outlet. You know, being able to take your kids out of the house, even, you know, myself, I have two young children and we have ice cream in the fridge all the time, but they constantly want to go out to the ice cream store, to, to the scoop shop to get their ice cream there. Uh, I don't think that's going to go away. Um, I don't think that it, it cheapens the brand. As long as you keep the same high quality ice cream available, um, and there, there's, there's no change in the, in the quality, I, I think that the, the brand uh, will remain as strong as it has been. Yeah, personally, I agree with you, Matthew. I don't think it cheapens the brand at all. If you look at, for example, a Hagen dazs you still yeah. get an in-store experience when you go to a Hagen dazs ice cream shop, but then when you buy it in the supermarket, it's still that premium ice cream product. And when I mentioned premium and we talk about quality, that was the second objection that I saw from people online saying, well, I hope the quality doesn't change. Are you able to maintain the quality that you get in the ice cream shop when you transfer it to a, a mass market produced uh, product that needs to be on the shelves for a certain amount of time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, to be honest, I was surprised and a little bit of that concern because for, from our standpoint, it's the same company that's bringing you the ice cream. It's the same exact formulation. Um, uh, so there would be no difference in the formulation for the ice cream that you have uh, in the supermarkets that you'll get in the, in the scoop shops or retail stores. And, and so it's also something that we didn't, you know, come at overnight, right? A lot of people are saying we should have been in stores a long time ago, but we've taken our time with it. You know, we've done our, all our R and D and our, 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 you know, research and, and we've really taken our time to try and perfect, uh, the product that we're going to have in supermarkets. So for those people who are doubters, I think they'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, you know, the other thing is that, you know, not all flavors will be available in supermarkets initially. You know, we've narrowed down the number of flavors uh, that will be initially available to five. Um, and, you know, the reason for doing that is to sort of limit the, the you know, sort of have more of a controlled uh, uh, rollout. Uh, we're focusing on these particular five flavors, and, and I, I think we've got these particular five flavors uh, done right. Um, and then once we have proof of concept uh, and people you know, don't have these fears, then maybe we'll expand to further flavors. What are the five flavors? So we're starting off with rum and raisin, uh, Devon stout, fruit and nut, uh, coconut, and my personal favorite, which is grape nut. No vanilla, I'm surprised. Right, well, you know, we wanted to start off with things that would differentiate us from other people that are already in those spaces. So. If you're a fan of vanilla, and trust me, vanilla is coming soon, and it actually has been one of the more highly requested flavors for supermarkets specifically, which is funny because it's not a very big seller uh, in the scoop shops. Um, but we wanted to be able to have flavors that would differentiate us from what you already had on your shelf, uh, you know, that was already available to you. And you know, the truth of the matter is that every ice cream company has vanilla, but not everyone has a great nut. Um, so that was initial thought process, but those other flavors, I know they're, uh, you know, are, are coming soon. Yeah. I think retail wise vanilla is not, I think I'm sure vanilla is like number one selling flavor, strong links and make sure chocolate. So it's probably vanilla fo followed by chocolate. Um, right. the next thing that I want to address is the price point. Cause I imagine, and you can tell me how this is going to work, that getting ice cream at an ice cream shop comes at a premium because it is an experience, you have more overheads. So I imagine that it would be cheaper in the supermarkets, but you explain to me how that's gonna work. Right, so it's actually very similarly priced. If you compare mm -hmm. quart to quart, which is our, our most even comparison, it would actually be slightly more expensive in supermarkets. And our thought process behind that was that you're paying for a little bit more for your ease of access. Um, so we price ourselves at about almost exactly the same as you would pay for a quart in store, maybe slightly more, but then we're under the price points for say like a Hagen dazs um, So I think if you want a premium ice cream with the, the ease of accessibility in the supermarkets, uh, you know, ours will be the most competitive uh, option price-wise. 
And then you know, we, we don't want to drive people also. We also don't want to drive people away from you know, obtaining their their quartz uh, that they have in store because um, we want to maintain that business as well. And there are some advantages of having your uh, you know getting your quartz in store. There's a variety of flavors. You can still get more than one flavor in one quart. These are things that will be accessible to you in the actual uh, scoop shops as opposed to in supermarkets. Um, but that's where we've chosen to price it. So a lot of comments coming in are already people saying that they've already seen them on shelves. So Shirley says, my friend bought one in the West today. I saw yeah, somebody I the else. the rollout has been this week. Yeah, somebody else said they bought it at John R. Wong earlier this week as well, sometime this week. And opinions coming in on the flavors that you should have. So Shirley said, add coffee next. Here it is. Tika said, saw them in John R. Wong Supermarket, New Kingston on Saturday. Uh, NB Lee saying, Devon Stout, great. Earl calling for rum. And yes, you have rum and raisin that's already available. Natoya said, pistachio is a must. And Tika saying, the price wasn't bad, but I was hoping that pralines and cream or crunchy munchy would have been available. So lots of opinions. You guys are going to have a hard time keeping that uh, number of flavors low because there are many uh, popular flavors out there. Yeah, I, I, you know, the plan is to expand, but we want to give us a little bit of a runway uh, for right now to you know get all the kinks out of the system and sort of get a, a good flow going in terms of our distribution and, and everything else. Um, and then new flavors will come for sure. Okay, I'm just seeing our Instagram comments, by the way. Shout out to Carlene in Brompton, Canada. Phenomenal Phoenix Queen in Portland, Port Antonio. And Salisbury in St. Andrew. Somebody else on Instagram is asking if there's a crunchy munchy shortage. Is there? <laughs> the, the, there is. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a shortage. So for all my crunchy munchy warriors out there, this is the most requested, uh, most you know, common question I get online. Um, Crunchy Munchy is coming back. It will be available uh, sometime during the beginning of summer or, or hopefully beginning to mid-summer. Um, it's not seasonal. So people have asked us that. We had an issue with one of our suppliers in terms of for one of the ingredients uh, for Crunchy Munchy. So we had to switch suppliers. But now that has all been sorted and Crunchy Munchy is coming back. So don't worry. Okay. Uh, let's talk about your export plans because I always saw this as a, a great road towards export, Devon House to me should be a global brand. So what are the plans for export now that you have the packaging right and you possibly would have the capability to, to send it abroad? Right, so you know we're not totally focused on export at this point in time. Uh, you know, the, the truth of the matter is that right now we're focused on this endeavor uh, and getting the uh, uh, scoops, uh, sorry, uh, Devon House ice cream to as many places locally uh as we can um so uh we're focusing uh specifically uh locally sorry um uh and you know any thoughts of ex expansion or or export would be premature at this time so i wouldn't want to comment on it okay uh what are the hurdles towards exporting? Is it that you have to have certain stamps from like, what is it, FDA, Food and Drug Administration? Like, what are the hurdles to that? Right, so obviously to export, you know, you'd have to have certain certifications from a manufacturing standpoint. But, you know, to be honest, it would be really premature to have any discussions about that right now. We're not really focused on that. We're currently focused on uh, this current new endeavor that we have in supermarkets locally. And we wanna get that correct first. All right, let's take some of the comments because there are quite a few coming in. Kemoy wants to know, do you have any low sugar non-dairy options? We don't uh, currently, but it is something we're also currently investigating as a part of our R&D process. We hope to have something like that for you relatively soon, but uh, we don't have one currently available. Christopher wants to know if you have a location in Portmore, and if not, do you have any plans for one? We don't currently have a, a Devon House branded store and location, so we don't operate one in Portmore, but we do have many authorized resellers there. So there is penetration to the uh, that market, and you know, hopefully get into markets so there will be another way to have penetration into the to, to that market. But we currently don't uh, have a store in Portmore, and we don't have plans to open up uh, one soon, but if the opportunity comes up, 
you know, we're more than happy to, to grab it. Next question comes from Ryan. Well, you already answered this one, but he wanted to know when are you going to target exports in a real way? Jamaicans in Florida would love to have Jamaican made ice cream. Yeah, so you yeah. said not no, but any plans in the future, five years? Well, we'll say never say never, but any talk about it now would be premature. Okay. Elaine wants to know, are you planning to IPO like your brother's company? Um, the answer to that would be no. Well, we don't have any immediate plans for IPO. Um, you know, we have some experience from a family standpoint with the IPO process and, and with Creamy being a, a public company. Um, but, you know, we're, we're firm believers that if you go to the market, you should have it, do it with a plan in mind or with a need. And as of right now, we've been able to fund most of our endeavors through more traditional means. Um, so we don't have plans to do an IPO currently, but, you know, never say never. Christopher says, I'm sure it's going to be a hit in the supermarkets. It's always good to see Jamaican products easily accessible. We have Lucian saying Devon House coming to the stores will cause, so he says the opposite, will cause a decrease in the excitement of the product and the brand. Christine says, we have to cater for everyone. Persons that are far from Devon House will be able to enjoy a Devon House ice cream. We have Elaine says, if the quality remains the same, the company and the brand will live on. Think about the big brands in the U.S. and the rest of the world. Quality, quality, quality. And then Kemoy says, dance a yard before you dance abroad. So I guess uh, Kemoy is thinking along the lines that you are, Matthew. Absolutely. All right. So anything else that you want to tell us about, you know, your rollout, your expansion and what's next for the company? Sure. I mean, so we're, we're like I said, we're going into supermarkets and we should be in over, I believe, 100 locations uh, by the end of the week. Um, you know, I, I think the demand for it has been high. And in terms of the places, you know, apparently from the feedback we've been getting, it's not just the larger you know, supermarkets, larger locations. A lot of the small to medium uh, uh, outlets are also showing real demand. And uh, you know, the the whole purpose of this rollout is that we want to have, when we've experienced or heard that feedback before, that Devonos ice cream is not readily available to you know uh, to everyone in Jamaica, especially in rural areas or or the areas that we don't have our branded stores, we don't control. Um, and so I think the, the great part of this endeavor is that we'll be able to get ice, the Devon House ice cream uh, to more people uh, in Jamaica across the island. And we want to make it where any at any point in, in anywhere across the island that somebody wants Devon House ice cream, they'll have access to it. And that's a lot of what this, uh, this rollout into supermarkets and the modern trade, the modern retail trade is all about. Any new flavors in the works? No, we, we don't have any new flavors, but you know, we're constantly innovating from a, a flavor standpoint. Over Easter, we had the bun and cheese flavor, which was a big hit. Um, and so you can anticipate new flavors coming out. We try to do things for, you know, seasonally. Um, we don't currently have any new flavor. We had a, a, actually, we just did one for uh, Mother's Day. So there was a, a flavor, you know, specifically for Mother's Day. Um, and so we're constantly coming up with new flavors, usually uh, ones that are seasonal or you know, for, for different events or different times throughout the year. Um, I don't know of any specifically current new flavors right now, but be on the lookout because we're always coming out with new things. <laughs> Nana Sen says, what about weed ice cream? Yeah, again, no, that's not, not something we're, uh, we're planning <laughs> on anytime soon. Okay, and then Mike says, I agree to keep it Jamaica and it's the best ice cream in the world and I mean it. I so really all the best. That. All the best with the rollout, Matthew. A hundred stores on a, a launch is impressive, to say the least. And I can't wait to try out new Devon House ice cream in supermarkets. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you much. Thank you so much. Matthew Clark, director of Scoops Unlimited, the makers of Devon House ice cream. Check them out in a store near you starting this week if you live in Jamaica. And uh, those of you abroad, Sorry, you're going to have to wait a little bit, but eventually, I have no doubt, it will get there.